بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومولاه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Today inshallah we're continuing with our series on the names of Allah and we're going to be talking about the name of Allah المستعان المستعان translated as the one whose help is sought the one whose help is sought um, the root word coming from al-aun means uh, help or support or assistance and when you put it in the istaf'ala pattern which means to seek whatever the, the word is, a'ana means to, to help. And so therefore, ista'ana, when you put it all together, means to seek help, simply put. And then if you t put the maf'ul pattern or the passive pattern, it becomes this name of Allah, al-musta'an, the one whose help is sought. So that's how you break it down from the Arabic perspective. The implication is what? The implication is that everybody ultimately seeks help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way or another. Whether you recognize it or not, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, everybody is ultimately uh, seeking help from and depending upon and their existence is entirely dependent upon what? On upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who seeks help from no one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeks help from no one. This name of Allah is mentioned twice in the Quran. Once in Surah Yusuf when Allah ta'ala says, بَعْدِ عَرُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَجَاءُوا عَلَىٰ قَمِيصِهِ بِدَمِينٍ كَذِبٍ قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَمْرًا فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَىٰ مَا تَصِفُونَ And they brought upon his shirt false blood. Uh, uh, Ya'qub said, rather your souls have enticed you to something so patience is more fitting and or patience is or beautiful patience you could say and Allah is the one sought for help against that which you describe so this is the scene in which uh, the brothers had put Yusuf السلام, in the well then they want to take his shirt and put blood on it without ripping it which was a sloppy job in terms of uh, creating a fake scene where the child was ripped to shreds and yet somehow his shirt was not ripped so the father immediately recognized the mistake and uh, subhanAllah, this is a, you could say, the, one of the biggest nightmare scenarios for any parent. The idea that your child goes missing, you don't know if they have, are hurt, are crying, you don't know if they're dying or if they have died, you don't know anything about their circumstance, you don't know if they're being abused in any way. A'udhu Billah, may Allah protect us all from ever suffering such a terrible um, uh, you know, uh, scenario or scene in our life, such a circumstance, may Allah protect us all. And so why is this a beautiful name? Because he said, Sabrun Jamil, he said, I'm going to have beautiful patience and Wallahu al Musta'an, and Allah is the one that I seek help from. And why is this such a beautiful name? Because look at the results. SubhanAllah, when you recognize that Allah is al Musta'an, the one who you take uh, help from, SubhanAllah, the child didn't turn up either dead or injured or anything like this. Alhamdulillah, rather, although it did take many years and although that process was a very tough process, uh, at the end of the day, they finally found him and he was in a top position in Egypt, uh, subhanAllah, he, he was you know, blessed in such a, a remarkable way. So alhamdulillah, this is part of the beauty of this name of Allah, Al-Musta'an. The second place where Al-Musta'an shows up is in uh, Surah Anbiya, ayah number 112, where Allah says, uh, قَالَ ala ma That the Prophet uh, has said, what? My Lord, my Lord, judge between us in truth, and our Lord is the most merciful, the one whose help is sought against that which you describe. So yes, this is the name of Allah, Al-Musta'an. And it's also used, we find, in hadith in a number of places. One particular place, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was in an area and there were different sahaba that were coming to visit him. And uh, there was a certain sahabi that was with the Prophet ﷺ and asking, should I let this person in? He wants to come and visit me. Should I let him in? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, what? Uh, iftah wa bashirhu bil jannah. He said, yes, go ahead, open the door, let him in, and give him the glad tidings of paradise. And it was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And then later another sahabi came and then he said the same thing. Iftah wa bashirhu bil jannah. Open up the gate for him, let him in, and give him the glad tidings of paradise. Uh, and this was, lo and behold, it was Umar ibn al-Khattab al-Anhu. And then finally, the third person comes and wants to join as well. And the Prophet says what? Iftah wa bashirhu bil jannah ala balwa takun. So uh, he's saying what? That open it up and give him glad tidings of paradise after a trial would afflict him. And so uh, this uh, sahabi went and opened the door. And who was it? It was, um, uh, it was Uthman ibn Affan uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And when he informed him and said, you know, the Prophet said glad tidings of paradise after a big trial, then what was his response to that? When Uthman heard this, he said, Allahumma sabran. He said, oh Allah, patience. Or, Aw, or he said, Allahu al-musta'an. Allah's help, oh, uh, Allah's help is to be sought. Allah is al-musta'an, the one whose help is to be sought. So even the sahaba, when they heard incredibly tough news and finding out, okay, I will make it to paradise, but you know, my future has some, some really, some hardship involved. He's like, Allahumma musta'an, you know. This is a very common phrase that you, you'll hear 
amongst uh, you know people who are native speakers of the Arabic language, Allahu Musta'an, they'll say this often, and uh, it's a beautiful statement because you're recognizing that help is only sought from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the ultimate sense. There are two kinds of people in this world, those who are sustained by Allah and don't recognize it, and those who are sustained by Allah and do recognize it. So we want to be those who recognize it. And how do you recognize it? By saying, Allah al Musta'an. I know that Allah Ta'ala is the one who sustains everybody. I'm recognizing it, and I'm recognizing that He is the one that I take my I, I, I take refuge in or I seek help from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that we declare that He is the only one whose help is sought when Allah Ta'ala says, Say, O Muhammad, say this, and by extension, all of us are supposed to say what? Invoke those you claim as deities besides Allah. They do not possess an atom's weight of ability in the heavens or on the earth, and they do not have therein any partnership whatsoever. We have to be clear about this, that we don't believe that anybody has any power except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, uh, so again, the word qul here is, is mentioned, say it, which means what? وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ And say, praise due to Allah, who has not taken a son and has no partner in his dominion. Uh, in his dominion. And we're supposed to repeat what? The statement of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This is something that is a dhikr. They're supposed to repeat, there is no power, there is no change. Uh, 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 there, is no, there is no change, there is no strength except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, deserves to be sought for help. As Allah ta'ala says, wa in yamsaska Allahu bi durrin fala kashifa lahu illa hu. Wa in yuridika bi khayrin fala radda li fadlihi. And if Allah should touch you with an adversity, there is no remorse mover of it except him. Allah is the only one who's going to remove that hardship. And if he intends for you good, then there is no repeller of his bounty. In other words, sometimes, subhanAllah, even if you mess everything up, even if you've got no talent whatsoever, subhanAllah, some people, you know, if they just take two steps and they just fall into, uh, you know, great fortune, subhanAllah. They trip and fall into great fortune. And I'm sure we've all seen people like this in our lives who the person can uh, you know, barely accomplish anything in their lives, and yet, subhanAllah, somehow everything just works out for them. And so you recognize that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are nobody to try to repel Allah's blessings. But just be happy for that person, alhamdulillah, at the end of the day. Allah says what? مَا يَفْتَحِ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ رَحْمَةٍ فَلَا مُمْسِكَ لَهَا وَمَا يُمْسِكْ فَلَا مُرْسِلَ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ Whatever Allah grants to, uh, to people of mercy, none can withhold it. And whatever He withholds, none can release it thereafter. In other words, if I, dis if I want to give, you're not going to stop me. And if I want to withhold, you can't do anything about it anyway. SubhanAllah. As Allah says, Indeed, your Lord is the one who does whatever he intends, whatever he wants. So then, how can we apply this name of Allah? This name of Allah, Al-Musta'an. Well, we should be dependable our ourselves. We should try to reflect uh, 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 this, 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 this quality, this name, this attribute of Allah in ourselves to the best of our ability by being dependable that we can be dependent upon by others when they are in need. In, when they are in need. The Prophet ﷺ says what? Al-Muslimu akhul muslim la yathlimuhu wa la yuslimuhu That the Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. He should not oppress him nor should he hand him over and submit him to an oppressor. Whoever fulfilled the need of his brother, Allah will fulfill his need. And whoever brought his Muslim brother out of a discomfort, Allah will bring him out of a discomfort on the day of resurrection. And whoever screened or protected a Muslim, Allah will screen him and cover his faults on the day of resurrection as well. SubhanAllah. Furthermore, we should rem remember that what? Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. The Prophet says, what? Every one of you is a shepherd and, or a guardian, and every one of you is responsible for his ward. In other words, Whoever you have any sort of power over, feel a sense of responsibility to be a shepherd to that group, to guide them in the right direction, to be a good, good example, and so on and so forth. We should try to depend less upon people. There's nothing wrong with depending upon the mechanic when your car breaks down or you know, the doctor when you get sick, but at the end of the day, the less dependable, the, the dependent you are on people, the more independent you are, the better of a quality that has. People like those who are more independent and uh, they trust them more and they uh, uh, you know, want to be around them more. Nobody enjoys somebody who's a mooch, who's always needing help with this, that and the other, always complaining and always taking from others. Rather, you want to be the type of person who is as independent as possible. Uh, the process, oh, actually, this is not a hadith, this is a proverb. It's a nice proverb though. It says what? Ihtaj ila man shi'ta takun asirahu. Wastaghni am man shi'ta takun nazirahu. وَأَحْسِنْ إِلَىٰ مَنْ شِئْتَ تَكُنْ أَمِيرَهُ So it's a nice cute proverb that has a little bit of a rhyming pattern to it. And it says what? Need whoever you want and become their prisoner. Be independent of, of whoever you want and become their equal. Be excellent to whoever you want and become their leader. 
So it's a really, really nice, three simple statements of proverb in Arabic in, implying what? The more you need someone, then you're at their mercy, right? So need whoever you want, you can do it, but just know that you're gonna be, basically be their prisoner when they wanna help or when they don't wanna help, you're gonna be dependent on them. Be independent of that person and you'll become their rival. I don't need you, you don't need me, and so therefore we are equals on this plane, we're like rivals. And then be excellent and do ihsan towards others. Be generous towards them and what? Then you become their leader. Now they want to be uh, around you and they depend upon you and they love how much you give. So subhanAllah, I think this is extremely important in terms of marriage as well. Uh, we're finding that the marriage dynamic is uh, often eroding unfortunately because men are not uh, taking up that sort of leadership position of really being the providers that can be depended upon. So uh, if your marriage is uh, having troubles and suffering and so forth, this is something you really need to pay attention to. You really want to do ihsan towards your wife and then inshallah ta'ala she will see you as the leader that you should be inshallah ta'ala. Now, in terms of a uh, dua, we know that the Prophet ﷺ taught a very beautiful dua, a very comprehensive dua, which is what? Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu nabiyyuka muhammadun wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma ista'adha bika minhu nabiyyuka muhammadun wa anta al-musta'anu wa alayka al-balaghu wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. The Prophet ﷺ taught a very comprehensive dua because some people were saying, Ya Rasulullah, we can't memorize all the duas you taught us and there's so many beautiful duas. We want to, what is something? And he said, no problem. I'll teach you one that is comprehensive. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but this is essentially uh, the, the concept. And then the Prophet ﷺ directed them to something that was very uh, encompassing, and he told them to make this dua. Oh Allah, we ask you from the good of what your Prophet Muhammad asked, uh, 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 asked of you, and we take refuge in you from the evil of that which your Prophet Muhammad sought refuge in you from, and you are the one whom help is, from whom help is sought, and it is for you to fulfill. Uh, uh, and there is no might and no power except by Allah. So subhanAllah, it's a very beautiful, beautiful uh, dua that is very comprehensive of all the du'as that the Prophet made. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions that, look, it's possible to trust a person while not necessarily depending upon them. Let's think about like a teenager who's now independent. He's, let's say, living on his own. He's not depending upon his parents, but he still trusts them because he knows if he gets in trouble, he can always still go back to his parents and get some sort of help. So it's possible to uh, have trust without dependence. At the same time, it's also possible that a person depends on somebody without necessarily trusting them. You could be the case that you are underneath the, uh, uh, the uh, rulership of some sort of a dictator and you don't really trust them, but you still know that you depend upon that government to you know, run the system and, and so on and so forth. And so therefore, uh, it's possible that you depend on someone when you do not trust them. However, isti'ana, this concept of isti'ana, is combines what? Depending and trusting. That you depend entirely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entirely. Both of these come together in uh, al-isti'ana and therefore Allah is al-musta'an, the one whose help is sought, uh, that you depend upon him while trusting in the results fully, insha'Allah ta'ala. And we should also recognize that when you look at the whole Qur'an, scholars will say that Surah Fatiha is essentially the summary of this entire Qur'an. In, in, in one way or another, you'll find that Surah Fatiha is like this all-encompassing sort of summarized message of the entire Qur'an. And then Surah Fatiha itself, the center verse, right in the middle of it, is what? The summarizing sentence of إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It's the declaration. That is, is you alone that we worship and it is you alone that we seek help from. And nasta'in comes from isti'ana, same, same root. So why is ibadah, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ ibadah? it is you alone that we worship, why is it that this concept of worship is mentioned first and then isti'ana, seeking help, is mentioned second? Well, there's a number of reasons. Number one, because worship is the end goal and seeking help is the means. So you say, Ya Allah, the end goal is to worship you properly, but I know I'm flawed. I know I have lots of mistakes. I know I'm going to do a bad job at it, so I seek your help to do a better job at worshiping you. So that's one explanation. Another one is what? Worship or ibadah is what Allah Ta'ala asked us for and isti'ana is what we ask of Allah. So Allah is saying, I want your worship, and we, and we say, well, we want your isti'ana. So that's the relationship. And so what he demands comes first before our request, which comes second. So that's another explanation. Another reason is what? Worship is what Allah demands, and he's so merciful that he helps us with it, which is represent isti'ana. That's kind of like the first one, similar to the, the first concept. And the final point I'll mention is what? That worship is most natural in good times, out of gratitude. You know, you do ibadah, you worship when things are going well. But seeking help is usually most natural when things are in hard times, when you're out of desperation. And so therefore, the positive comes before the negative, and that seems most appropriate in this uh, order of and Allah knows best. So yes, uh, seeking Allah's help is what we're ordered to do. As uh, the Prophet mentions, what? 
بالغدوه والروحه وشيء من الدلجه and seek help through worship in the morning in the evening and in the late hours of the night الدلجه in the late hours of the night never forget that that's the best time to seek Allah's help through worship um, yes just because we ultimately seek help from Allah that doesn't prevent us from seeking help from other people this idea that some people may be extremists and saying no I never ask anybody for anything I would remind them that Allah in fact commands us وَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلِ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of, uh, you could say the specialists, when you don't know, if you don't know. So, أَهْلِ الذِّكْرِ means, uh, you know, the people of the message or the people of remembrance, but it could be translated as the specialist, the person who remembers a certain subject all the time, أَهْلِ الذِّكْرِ or who is the most, uh, um, uh, yeah, the specialist in a certain field. And therefore, Allah is saying, look, speak to the specialist if you don't know. So, therefore, obviously, it's halal to turn to a person and say, hey, look, you know, you're a specialist in this field. How do I deal with such and such a situation? Again, same thing with like with the doctor, the mechanic, or whoever else. This is perfectly fine. It's, in fact, commanded in the Quran. Allah also says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى And cooperate. Ta'awun means to mutually help each other. That means you ask me and I ask you and we cooperate with one another. And it comes from the same root or letters of al-aun and to help. And ta'awun is mutual. So clearly, it's halal for us to ask each other for help. So saying Allah is al-musta'an does not mean you can never ask anybody for help. It's a recognition that ultimately help comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, there are different ayat to prove this in the Quran. And the third one is what? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah says that you know, those who are winners as opposed to losers are who? Those who believe, do good deeds, and they mutually help each other and encourage each other in truth, and they mutually help and encourage each other in patience. That means what? You're asking of me, I'm asking of you in terms of truth, that means clarifying right versus wrong, and then the actual application of it, as sabr uh, uh, having the patience to push each other. That's a tawasi, a tawasi mutually advising, mutually benefiting each other, uh, both giving and receiving and requesting advice and so on and so forth. All this is perfectly halal. And of course, we should never forget that when you have to make a ma major decision in life, you should pray uh, Salat al-Istikhara, uh, inshallah ta'ala. This is the way you, t you ask Allah ta'ala. He is al-Musta'an, the one who is ultimately going to help you in your decisions. So you pray Istikhara and uh, ask Allah ta'ala to guide you in your major decisions. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, we close. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who always remember his names and call upon him in the best of ways. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa